Hey, Tim Sykes here with a pre-market video lesson. Uh, I'm filming this actually the night before because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be around right near the market open um, on Wednesday. So I'm filming this on Tuesday night, but the lessons are the same no matter what time I am filming this. Um, I had a good day uh, today on Tuesday, made nearly $2,000, did not trade uh, perfectly, missed out on a play, uh, actually played both of my two trades a little too safely, and yet I still made roughly two grand. I have several video lessons where I say two grand a day keeps the real job away, and I stand by that. Um, and I understand many of you guys have smaller accounts, so maybe two grand a day is not feasible right now, but eventually, if you grow your account over time, you get to a place where you can make two grand a day. That is a pretty good sweet spot. Um, before I get into the lesson, just want to remind you, you have just a few days to take advantage of this sale with newsletters and DVD guides, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% off. This will end the first week of January. So you have literally just a few days. There will be no uh, extensions. You know, I want to kind of pay it forward where you can invest in your education. That's cool. But you either want to learn or you don't. Um, you know, I have so many students who are begging for my time uh, and begging for basically just any kinds of rules because we all know that 90% of traders lose. Um, so it's the rules that will save you. It's the rules that will make or break you. So I'm proud to share them with you. But at the same time, unless you're dedicated, you're just going to fall into the 90%. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to be fake like some people. You have to study. And I'm proud to make these tools to help you study, to get you there, to be part of the 10%. I want more millionaire students, but I can't study for you. You guys are going to have to study. Um, the good news is we've made all of these guides, my top students and I, um, to try to make it easier for you. So we've done the heavy lifting. You just have to actually pay attention, take notes, and apply it to your trading. Um, also, I wanted to quickly go over my recent trades. I've been on a bit of a hot streak, um, and later this week, I'm going to tell you about some stuff that has been going on outside of the stock market for me. Um, it hasn't been such a pleasant few days, and I've been kind of just wanting to uh, you know, focus on trading first before I get into the kinds of life lessons that I've learned the past uh, few days. And you know, as good as my trading has been, my life outside trading has not been so great. So it's going to be confession time for me later this week. Um, I've just been in Mexico and the Wi-Fi is not great. And we actually recorded some of my trades live. I have my whole little video crew with me. And I've also filmed some kind of confessionals. So stay tuned for that later this week. Not so fun, but guess what? Sometimes life isn't so fun. And it's interesting that I've been able to really stay pretty profitable um, the past few weeks, even as this uh, kind of stuff has, has impacted me, especially the past few days, um, really like the past uh, week or so. So I'll talk about that later, but the key to my success has been taking profits, um, aiming for singles and taking those singles, not aiming for home runs, not you know having singles and then trying to get greedy and, and going for home runs. It's just been locking in gain after gain after gain. And pretty much on every single one of my recent profits, I've underestimated the plays. Um, you know, going back even two weeks, I mean, GLNNF bounced more, PIXY bounced more, MARK went up another $2 a share. So this could have been a $10,000 profit. PETZ, I had such issues with E-Trade the other day. This is the trade that I have uh, live where I could have made over 5,000, only got a small fraction of that. And then today, SGLB and LMFA traded both of them a little too cautiously, but still made nearly two grand. So if you understand the lesson by the end of this video, um, please learn to take singles. Uh, leave a comment saying, I love singles, um, because that's what it comes down to. You know, a few thousand dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, even if you're trading with a smaller account, maybe it's you know not necessarily a few thousand dollars. Maybe for you, a single is making like 50 or $100. But trust me, 
aiming for singles, going for singles is the way to building your account over time, especially in this market. Um, and it's been a rather crazy market. So I guess I'll start with my first trade on SGLB. Um, this was a big winner late last week, uh, and it had a little bit of a panic down here to the 280s, uh, bounced back to 360, and then another panic this morning. Um, and I dip bought the panic. I like dip buying panics. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really bounce that much. You know, I was buying it in the 270s, so it had already panicked quite nicely, nearly a dollar a share. And I'm just looking for a bounce, you know, ideally back to three. Um, it did happen late day and it's happening nicely after hours, but it really didn't bounce um, pretty much all morning the way that I want it. So, you know, I got out for a small profit of a few hundred uh, selling into this kind of mess inside of an hour. You know, it did make new lows to the 260s, but just by like five cents, you know, it was already down so much. It's tough for a stock to go down 20, 25% in this market uh, when there's no bad news. Uh, and there actually was good news late last week. And then it kind of had a gradual all day bounce. And the lesson you can learn here is, okay, I made a few hundred, but even if I had lost a few hundred, you know, I like dip buying morning panics on recent hot stocks. We are in such a fantastic market where it pays to be a little speculative, buying breakouts, buying, you know, ridiculous panics, not necessarily chasing, um, although I'll give you a few examples where chasing actually would have worked, but I'm still never going to chase. I don't care if there's a few examples. Chasing uh, opens up your, you know, just potential for catastrophe, and I don't want that. So SGLB, I was, you know, dip buying the morning panic, a classic lesson. I have 400 plus video lessons on dip buying morning panics. So it's my kind of pattern. I uh, just did not get the bounce that I wanted until, you know, much later in the day and I was already out by then. So make a little, lose a little, I was wrong on this. It's a scratch. And I need you to understand that having scratches is okay. It's part of the game. Not every play is gonna be a big win or a big potential loss. Some plays, they're just gonna do nothing. Um, and I'll get out of those because they're wasting my time. Um, you know, you start sometimes to have patience and you're like, well, it's not doing anything. Let me give it more time. And then it turns into a loss. So for me, I go in with very specific expectations, a very specific plan. I've seen these plays bounce again and again and again and again and again. So I know what kind of price action it should have if it is going to bounce. And it just didn't have it. Um, and then sometimes, you know, you have these late day bounces, which I don't even care about. It did not bounce in the time frame that I wanted. Um, and, you know, I guess I could have sold it here in the 290s and made like 20 cents a share. Worst case, I would have lost 10 cents. As it turned out, I made like 5 cents. So in the grand scheme of the trade, I did pretty much, you know, middle, uh, taking the meat of the move, I guess you would say. If I could have made 20 cents and I made like 5 cents, or I could have lost 10 cents and I made 5 cents. You know, I'm kind of like mid-range. Um, that's the lesson there. Um, oh, I wanted to congratulate one student. Shoot. My bad. Hold on. Let me find this. Let me pause this for a second. Uh, I'm sorry that there's been so much going on. Bob Knight, I got to give you props. Turbo Bob in chat. Um, he has made just under $300,000. And he says, I have to thank Tim Sykes for my success. It's not easy, but hard work, discipline, and a mentor like Tim Sykes. And it becomes possible. Thanks, Tim, and happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Bob. I mean, this is this is just uh, incredible. And I meant to do a video congratulating you earlier. I'm sorry. It's been really a rough week for me, as you'll hear later this week. But I'm very proud of you. It's not just about making millions of dollars. You know, if you can make 287000 in a year, that's fantastic, too. If you can make 87,000, you really have to remember that most traders lose. So if you somehow find a strategy or strategies or pattern or patterns that work for you and you become profitable, that's a good start. Um, you know, any one year is good, but the key is learning so that you can apply those lessons and hopefully trade with a bigger account in the future and then you can make more money. Every single trade, every single day should be looked at as something as part of your journey and part of your education to utilize 
in the future. And I know that sounds corny. I know you just want the money now, but I really need to get you guys thinking of this as a marathon, not a sprint. So Bob, congrats on the 287. That's awesome. You can trade with a bigger account, but also I know what you've done uh, to actually make this kind of money and all the practice and all the discipline. So props to you. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do in the future. Um, sorry, I just had to give him props real quick. Um, one other trade that I did. Oh, I guess I'll, I'll talk about the stocks that I, I should have chased. Um, again, I say that jokingly, I will never chase. I don't care if I miss every play in the world. If you chase, you just expose yourself to risk. And I don't like that as a teacher, as a trader. Um, this is FTFT this morning, you know, spiking on news of blockchain. Uh, it's, it really reminds me back of 99 and 2000, like literally when I first started trading nearly 20 years ago, any company would just add .com to their name and they would like double or triple within a few days. Um, because they're like, oh, they're getting on the internet. They're going to change everything. So now companies are saying we're getting into blockchain, we're getting into Bitcoin, and the stocks are doubling and tripling and quadrupling. Um, same exact kinds of patterns, same exact kind of moves. FTFT had a spike uh, previously and then uh, another spike here. Um, you know, I'm thinking that the high is going to be 660 because that was the recent former high. And if you look back at, at recent days, I mean, uh, really even 580 should be resistance. So 660 and 580. I was trying to buy it on the breakout here above 580. I, I said this in chat today and some people were like, Tim, why are you buying it at 580? That's a random number. No, it's not a random number. Uh, you just have to look back at previous highs, okay? The previous high here was 660. The previous double top, right here was 580. So I tried to buy it this morning at around 585 with a goal of it touching 660. That would have been my whole trade. If I had gotten executed at 580, you're damn right I would have been out in the mid sixes. There's no way I would have lasted a seven or 750. So I don't mind missing uh, because it all happened so damn quickly. I mean, it went from 580, this is at 931 a.m., and this is at 9.36 a.m. where it goes up another $2 a share. So you have five minutes uh, and, and it's moving so fast. I didn't want to chase it. Uh, you know, it was 5.80 in one minute and then literally 6.30. So even if I had bought it, there's no way I would have been able to alert it. Uh, frankly, I, you know, even as I'm typing the alert, I'd, I'd already be selling. Like it, it moves so quickly. Um, so I didn't want to chase, but that was my goal. Looking at former recent highs, which were was around 575, 580. So I'm trying to buy the breakout here at 585, and my goal would have been to sell at 660. It would have been about a one or one and a half minute trade if it had been executed. Um, I'm glad I said something in the chat room where I, I think I said like I I'm I tried to buy this here, uh, you know in the 580s and I missed my execution. Sometimes I'll post that in the chat room, even when I don't get executed because it's good for you to know my thought process. Um, as it turned out, I should have chased it, but again, I'm not gonna chase. Uh, this is still another potential buy. This this could keep going, you know, it closed here. Um, if I am gonna try to buy it again, again, I don't know if I'm gonna be there at the market open, so that's why I'm making this video less than the night before. But if I do try to buy it, uh, you know, my goal would be to sell it in the 660 area. You see it put up kind of a, a late day uh, top here at 675 and then a late day top here at 660. So if I am dip buying it in the, the high fives or low sixes, I'm not going to bet that it's going to break 660 again. But if it does, it might be, you know, really quick as has been happening. Um, another one I didn't want to chase was TEUM, which just keeps going again blockchain bullshit news um all of these companies will fail all of these companies will go to zero so don't ever believe that this is the next great blockchain uh play you know it's it's all just hype to get their stock up and then they can do a financing or enrich the insiders um it's 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 how small caps and penny stocks work so you have to understand the game I'm a little too cynical. It's kind of funny. A lot of newbies are making money right now because they're just chasing everything and they're getting rewarded. They're going to get crushed when logic and, and you know rationale returns back to the market, as it always does, whether it's a few days or a few weeks. 
um, all the newbies, you know, kind of are getting cocky right now, that usually is a precursor to the death of them and their accounts. It's uh, it's foreshadowing. So right now, newbies are getting rewarded for chasing. And then you have like veterans like me, like saying, no, don't chase. And the newbies are like, shut up, you old timers. The market's changed. This time is different. Actually, those are terrible words. This time is never different. It's just gone a little further than I thought. Uh, TEUM, I specifically thought about dip buying it in here in the 230s, 240s, 250s area. And then I was like, ah, you know, this one never holds its gains. So I didn't want to chase it. And then after hours today, it's up to the threes. So again, this is an example where chasing would have worked. But you watch if you chase more times than not, you will lose uh, more times than not. So right now, we're kind of in this crazy market where normal rules don't necessarily apply and you can get away with some shit. But trust me, if you start getting sloppy and you start applying that to all your trading, you will get decimated. Um, so I'm not going to chase uh, on TEUM or FTFT. The one play I did buy late day was LMFA. Um, if you look at this stock really over the past 100 days, but not even the, next, the past 100 days. I mean, if you just focus on the past... 20 days. Um, it really can spike. I mean, here it, it spikes. This is uh, roughly a month ago from 243 to 343 comes back down. Then you get one more spike, 230 up to three, back down. Then another spike, 240 up to four, then back down. Then another spike, 240 up to 440, then back down to the twos, then all the way up to the fives. So it got a little bunchy in here with big volume. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, it can do it again. Um, it's been downtrending pretty gradually. But as you can see today, the volume has come back. And the volume is very similar to the volume when it spiked multiple times before. So if this same kind of price action is going to happen again, then you don't want to chase any of these spikes because you can see it comes down. But... If you do catch it on one of these downdrafts and it still has high volume, it can re-spike. And that's exactly what happened. It spiked in the morning and started coming down. Volume was huge. And it keeps going. Now it spikes up again. Same exact kind of thing. This could go to the twos tomorrow. I don't know. Um, but I made my roughly 20%. So, again, I didn't go in with the expectation that it's going to pull one of these gigantic supernovas from the twos to the fives. Um, you know, it, it does have similar volume. You can see here actually beat. Well, here is one spike, uh, and it went from one, 180 to 240 and it came down, but this was just one volume bar of spike, uh, one, one volume bar of big volume here. You can see here, you know, we had several big volume bars and then a giant one to close out the day. So the key is having multiple giant bars throughout the day of volume. Uh, cause that tells me that, you know, there could be a lot of buyers on top of that or, or more buyers in the future too. On top of that, it's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven red days. Today was its first green day. Uh, this reminds me of PETZ, which also, uh, was a big spiker back several months ago. And this thing had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen red days in a row. And then the first green day led to three days of bouncing. So, you know, again, this this bounce failed. Uh, but the first green day on a on a former runner after it's gotten decimated for multiple weeks is a decent dip buying opportunity. And that's what I thought with of LMFA. Understand, I was buying it in the 150s. So now it's very different in the 180s. It already hit my goals. So I took my profits and locked in uh, just under $2,000. Um, I sold it in a few different chunks because I, I was trying to give it time. I was like, wow, this stock is strong. Um, you know, it, it broke the, the earlier morning highs. And now even after hours, it's, it's closing strong. But Again, I want you to learn to love singles. Making $2,000 in a day, making 20% on a trade, I mean, that's 
pretty damn good. And that is a kind of rule and a kind of strategy that can really work well in all markets. I know you want to be a gunslinger. I know you want to be more aggressive in this market. But trust me, learn to love singles. And if you understand that, uh, please do leave a comment underneath this video saying, I love singles. And, uh, you know, props to, to Bob Knight again. Uh, and I wanted to remind you also just to take advantage of the sale. Those are your daily reminders. I will be in the chat room tomorrow. Not sure if I'll be there right at the market open. I have a pretty important meeting, um, as I'll tell you about later this week. But, um, yeah. I mean, crazy market. Enjoy, guys. And I know there's many more of you guys that I haven't gotten a chance to congratulate. But, you know, what what Bob says here, uh, where did he go? What Bob says here, you know, first of all, about thanking me, I appreciate that. But Bob has also put in a lot of hard work and discipline. And, you know, it's not easy, okay? This is not like you just study a lot and you're guaranteed – $287,000 in profits. So while it's fun for me to show this stuff off um, and you know, I know it pumps you up, just know that you're going to have to grind so hard. You're going to have to work so, so much, not necessarily like manual labor, like heavy lifting. You know, I'm not asking you to like break your body. You're not like my ancestors building the pyramids, um, but you're going to have to work so much on your discipline and, and so much on your, um, I guess, kind of mental uh, concentration. Like you're really going to have to start to understand how to take profits again and again and again. Like Bob did not make $287,000 on one trade or two trades or three trades. The way that we make our money and, you know, many of you guys see him in the, the chat room. I mean, he's very active uh, in the challenge chat and I thank him for that. Uh, but the way that we do this is single after single after single. And sometimes we miss, sometimes we have losses, sometimes you know we, we hit doubles or triples, or sometimes we even do hit home runs. But by aiming for singles, trying to make 5, 10, 15, 20, 30%, that's it. Again and 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 again. And again 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 and again. I hope you understand my point. This is a process, and that is the key to making you know six figures, seven figures, eight figures over time. And I really need to stress it to you because too many of you guys think that any one trade matters. You think that, you know, it's okay to be a gunslinger. It's not. You must develop good habits, good discipline, good planning, good techniques before you're able to really grow your account exponentially. And then those good techniques will really, really come in handy when you do have big money. So be thankful um, I know many of you guys are bitter that you're trading with a small account. And you're like, well, Tim Sykes makes two grand a day because he's trading with all this. Yeah, and I fucking started with a few thousand dollars too, okay? Tim Grittani started with 1500 of his own money. Now he's over $5 million. Uh, Roland Wolf started with $4,000 this year. Now he's closing in on 500000 So the best traders that I know start with just a few thousand dollars. Um, so don't ever come to me and be bitter if you only have a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars. When you have such a small amount, that means that you have no excuse other in the world than to, you know, really focus and hone your technique because it's that technique that is going to make you in this lifetime. And when you have a small account, you have no excuse. You, you can't say, oh, uh, technique doesn't matter. I'll just bet big and be rewarded big because you have a small account, okay? If you have a big account, you can get sloppy. And most of my students with big accounts who are like, oh, Tim, I'll be your next millionaire student. I'm already started with a quarter of a million. I'm almost there. They suck because they don't take pride in their process. They don't take pride in their technique. They're too focused on making money. I wish that more students would start with small amounts. So that you're not, 
corrupt it by making five, ten, twenty thousand dollars in a day. And you can really, you know, work on your your small game, work on your, you know, I don't know, I'm trying to make weird golf analogies. Um, work on your techniques first before thinking about trying to make a ton of money. Um, I show you people like Bob Knight and, and Roland and Tim Grittani because I want to show you what is at the end of the rainbow. I want to show you what happens months and years after you work on your techniques over and over again. But don't you dare think that this is going to come easy. Don't you dare think that this is going to happen, you know, right away. Uh, let me just pull up a few, a few more tweets. Um, I really like Twitter. I, I, I know that it's like the slowest of all platforms. Oh, my God. My Twitter is so slow. My Internet is so slow. And I appreciate when you guys, you know, tweet at me. Um, this is good stuff. Kevin says, over the weekend hold on MGTI in at 490 out at 532. And look at this, tiny position. Like he's like trying to put himself down because he's only trading with 200 shares. This is a good trade. Making 40 cents a share on a $5 stock, 8%. This is a good trade. And you didn't even waste a day trade. So props to you. Don't ever put yourself down. And don't let anybody else put you down too. If you're just making small money or if you're just paper trading, you need to have the process first. And it pisses me off that a lot of these rich assholes and people who work nine to five jobs think that they can compare apples to oranges. You need to study first, not focus on money. I'm sorry. I wish the game were different, but that's what it comes down to. Um, I like this from Adrian. He says, been studying your craft for two weeks. Knew that TEUM was going up. I missed out due to E-Trade. Slight mistake with funds. All good, though. My studying is paying off. At least I knew I was correct. Turn an if only into what's next. And that's dead on right. Sometimes you're going to miss a trade, whether it's E-Trade or whether it's you or whatever. It's being on the right track that matters. That's why I review all these trades, because I want you to get on the right track. It's not just about the money. Um, I like this. Brian says, two years of studying four plus hours daily and paper trading every single day. I made 50% of my money. Started with 2,200. Now I'm closing in on 3,400 in just one week. All praise to Timothy Sykes, Stocks to Trade, Tim Grittani. Think about that. This is fucking awesome. This is what I love. Brian has been practicing for two years in paper trading, not with real money. And then in one week, because he has the process, because he's recognizing, you know, what's really moving. He's making 50% in one week. This is the beautiful thing about studying. You know, you're, you're so prepared ahead of time. If you have the patience, if you actually listen to me, um, when the plays are there, it's, it's like almost mechanical. Um, a lot of you guys don't practice for two years or even one year or even six months and you don't paper trade. So when there's a good opportunity, you're unprepared. So I would rather you paper trade. I would rather you trade with a small account and then start seeing, oh my God, this shit adds up so quickly. That's awesome. So thank you, Brian, for tweeting me that. Um, Damon uh, making 348. I like that on SGLB. Good short. Uh, Mia is studying my guides. Stacy, look at this. GBTC. It's not just penny stocks, guys. GBTC actually has a penny stock like pattern. It's nearly doubled off the lows. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. I'm actually working on my penny stocking framework guide, uh, penny stocking part de right now. And Stacy, your tweet and that GBTC example is actually in it. So kind of excited. Um, I like this. Look at this. Clay, uh, blockchain news is so hot right now. Oh, it's so hot right now. Uh, Friday profit 700 on FTFT and then on TEUM in at 196 out at 294 roughly 2700 in profits the last two trading days patience has been my position so look at how wise these people sound you know practicing for two years patience has been my position I'm really glad that some of you guys are really getting it and, and you're you're taking advantage of you know this kind of proper mentality I wish someone had told me this stuff when I first began. Patience is a position. Thank you for recognizing that. And then this was me actually on the top of a Mayan um, pyramid and I'm just pumped up with life and this view and, and all this potential where I can kind of talk directly to you 
and hopefully teach you some valuable lessons. So anyways, I got to get going. If I made my point, please do leave a comment underneath this video saying, I love singles. Thank you. I'll see you in the chat room.